and feeling good. Won't you be mine? Won't you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Okay, so that bit of foolishness. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for watching me, whether you watch me on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, I don't know. Here. <laughs> Apps. <laughs> Hello and welcome, you know, so if you're watching this somewhere else besides the HAPS app, why don't you take a minute to download the HAPS app? Uh, let me see. You can subscribe to me to get notified when I go live. And most importantly, support my non-work here on HAPS. I mean, my work here on HAPS. I don't know what you call work, but hello. <sighs> breathe in and breathe out. Okay, I am going to start off today by talking about what I see, what I heard, say if I was a jury member, say if I was, right? I'm, I'm a jury member. I'm sitting in, taking all the information just like anybody else would. Just like, and I watched the videos. I've watched them all. I've seen and heard from the witnesses, and of course the defense is presenting their witnesses now. The one of the well, Shawanda Hill. Um, <clears throat> she was either extremely nervous, extremely agitated, and/or extremely medicated, if you know what I mean. Because this woman just wouldn't sit still she looked angry to answer any questions whatsoever um from either defense or prosecution so i found that interesting <clears throat> watched uh, a video by uh the one of the park police minnesota park police members who had heard about what was being called on the radio and thought he was nearby and as they do uh, <laughs> you know, but <clears throat> they had a, a, you know, um, one of their people, you know, one of their witnesses come up, right? Professional witness talking about his experience with the, uh, prone can, what he called, okay, you ready? I don't know if you'll catch this as quick as I did, but the prone control position. Doesn't that, aren't the, couldn't they have thought of something better than PCP? <laughs> maybe, maybe they just don't know what PCP is. I don't know. Prone control position. And uh, this dude was asked, so if you've got somebody uh, down on the ground and you've got them handcuffed uh, and there are people kneeling on top of, you know, the suspect, the perp, whatever, uh, it just felt like throwing that in there. Um, are you trying to say that even while they're not moving, not resisting, not nothing, that they're still resisting and therefore you have to keep applying the uh, prone control position. I'm like, what? <laughs> I, was, I was listening to it. I'm thinking, you know, but you know what, though? You got to agree with me on this one, though, um, Justano. You have to agree with me that the Americans got it down when it comes to dealing with, like, the serious criminals. Like, do you seriously think Picton or, um, oh, man, yeah, Willie Picton, do you think that he would have only got 25 years for all the people that he killed, <laughs> you know, in the States? Maybe. He was white. Just, well, just Caucasian. There's no such thing as the color white and people anyway. Maybe albinos. People who don't have any pigment at all in their skin. But aren't they more like a pinkish color? Huh. 
Okay. Well, I'm thinking this too much. Willie would have been burned. Yeah, right? In the U.S. And same thing with child predators. There's like, people are, wouldn't be allowed to do that and get 25 years. You know? It's like, in the States, they do handle that well. Now, I'm not a real into the whole murder thing because, you know, I don't care if you're killing somebody, you're still killing them. So, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly, right? His family, oh, my God. Do you know that they live just up the street from me? Just up the street on Flint Road when I lived in Coquitlam. And the guy used to pop over, and that guy was so smart too, right? I mean, brilliant. I think he wanted to become a lawyer. He had all these books. Like, it was a big thing when the news came out about him, you know? Stupid. These people, I don't know why they pay them. Oh, we're going to give you, if, if I give you the information, then you have to give my significant other a hundred grand. <laughs> I don't think so. <clears throat> I don't know if it makes you feel any better, Stephen Trescott is still living in Winnipeg somewhere. Ay, ay. Yeah, there's, there's too many, too many people that are weird that shouldn't be. No, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I opened my eyes, I opened my ears, I shut my mouth. Well, if I was talking to somebody in my house during the day, it would mean I'm insane because nobody's here but me. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Well, although if you do hear a voice, it's usually the smart butt African gray parrot. Did, did I, African? Yes, African gray. No, I don't. <laughs> I maybe I do, but maybe I don't. I don't know. But what I've heard and what I've seen and the charts and all of this stuff, like things that have been on the books for decades. So it's not like they were just put there right after this happened, but they've been on the books for decades. Training that happened for decades. People knew things for decades, you know, regardless of whether they were an older, um, you know, they had been with the police force for a longer period of time or not, they should have all had the same training, you know. And when I'm watching this, and I'm watching the body cams of the police. And then this this witness comes up, one of theirs, and he's supposed to be a specialist on all of the, you know, he came up with the uh, prone. <laughs> I'm like, PCP, huh? <laughs> prone control position, PCP. He came up with that. And the guy was like, he was asked, so if so you're in a ha you're on handcuffs and you're laying on the ground and you have you know three people on top of you pinning you down so you can't move, you're trying to say that that person is still capable of resisting, still capable of being a threat, handcuffed face down on the ground with three people, grown men. Police officers who haven't just joined the force that day, you know. And this guy was going, he was asked by Nelson, which is Chauvin's lawyer, things like, well, you know, what would, you, if you were the an average police officer and there were people yelling at you and, uh, you know, on the ground while you're doing something, you know, 
would this give you concern to have people on the sidewalk yelling at you, calling you names? Mm -hmm. Not look, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought the police had thicker skin than that. Well, I hope you're getting this. <clears throat> this is beautiful today. Oh, really? See, I don't know. The death penalty is, I mean, we're not God. I don't know if we should be playing God and deciding who lives and who dies. I don't know. You know, as crappy as my parents were, I wouldn't wish that upon them. You know, the winter. I know, I've seen that on the news. They've been talking about this big storm that's gone through uh, Winnipeg and uh, looks like parts of Saskatchewan got it and down into Minnesota, I think, or sorry, North Dakota, maybe South Dakota too. Okay, see you later. Take care, Justana. But the George Floyd incident that's going on, I live in Vancouver, Canada. So I'm telling you, this is world news. And everybody, including me, who is a just, I don't possess any legal background, but I do have eyes. And as much as people want to say that, oh, you can make video you can change video. Sure, you used to be able to. You can still do it in some cases, you know. But when there's so many of the same video, maybe a couple of inches apart, showing the exact same thing, you have to believe what you're seeing. And I did not see any fear in any of the clips I've seen of Derek Chauvin. He was not necessary. He and his partner were not necessary to come to that scene. It was under control. And if two police officers can't handle one person, what are you doing? Why? You've got all this training. Why can't you handle one person who's already handcuffed and get them down on the ground if you have to do it because they're resisting, sure, but does it take four police officers? One just happens to rush right in and want to go to the head of Mr. Floyd and hold him down like that, you know. Uh, regardless of whether he had a knee on a jugular or not, he still had his other right knee and shin on Mr. Floyd's back, upper back. And according to their own specialist, you're supposed to have one knee and you could have your one shin on an angle over your shoulder area and then down on an angle over your trapezius muscle, pinning you down. But you can still breathe. But when you're pinned down completely by, by a person's weight, you know, <clears throat> makes it hard to breathe. And people are, oh, well, why, you know, in the prone position, you can breathe, you know, and I'll, no. That's what they do to COVID patients, very seriously sick COVID patients who cannot breathe. They will turn them onto their stomach in a prone position, minus the handcuffs, fortunately. And they will, the reason they do that is to try to make the person use their lungs, be, use it because they're having a hard time breathing in and out to expand their lungs and they want them to be able to force themselves to do that to strengthen their lungs while they're in you know on in the prone position or on their stomach but when you have a whole bunch of people and they're kneeling on you 
and they're holding you down. And in particular, the top one, which is the most important area, has you on the side of your neck and also on your back, two places, holding you down, not listening. When you're crying out, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. You know, and it's like for me, I think the officer should have done something immediately instead of Mr. Chauvin saying, uh huh, uh huh, like nothing, like it's nothing. I don't think he's breathing, uh huh. Uh, I don't think he's got a pulse, uh huh. And there's <clears throat> prosecution played that particular part of it, where it's his own um, cohorts, police officers, who are telling him, I don't think he's breathing. I don't think he's, uh, I think he's passed out. And you can clearly hear, and you can clearly hear Mr. Chauvin say, uh-huh like it was nothing. Well, should we turn him in the prone position? You know, should we turn him on his side? No, not yet. So I guess Officer Chauvin also had Dr. Chauvin in front of his title because he knew just how long would be okay for somebody to be held in that position, even past the point of no return when they're no longer breathing they are no longer able to speak. Mr. Nelson asked of that guy, well, did you notice Mr. Floyd's veins in his right arm were inflated, like sticking out, like somebody had just worked out. And uh, he said, uh, he said, yes. He says, yes, I did. And what does that tell you? That tells you he was resisting. Well, at that time with that arm on the right, he was trying to lift his chest up far enough so that he could get some breath in. And for that, nine minutes and 29 seconds later, this. And you know, people can say what they want we're entitled for an opinion, but not an opinion based on what we hear in the media or through word of mouth. Uh, you know, not through that, but through the legal system. And I'm so thankful that they've actually done what they're doing, which is having this open like this. But as far as I know, and it probably happened before, but oh yeah, it did. Trayvon Martin's um, killer, George Zimmerman, uh, I watched his trial from start to finish, and his was in Florida, which meant I had to get up at 6 o'clock every morning and start watching the trial. I'd been following that closely because one of his uh, cousins contacted me on a YouTube channel I had at the time where I was helping uh, just younger people in different causes and that sort of thing. At that time, George Zimmerman wasn't going to be charged. The police were not even going to look into him, and he claimed Stanley Brown, which eventually acquitted him. Um, but in this case, with Mr. Chauvin and this court case, you know, um, I find them to be very thorough. I think the judge has treated all the witnesses on both sides very uh, generally, uh, gen generously, um, and he's been very polite and respectful. Even Shawanda Hill, which who I found totally, I don't know, she needs help. That's all I got to say. She appears to be in a state of crisis. I don't think that she has been dealing with this well or you know, with life in general, perhaps, I'm not sure, but she gave that uh, image of herself when she gave her testimony. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> throat> 
And what's happened with Dante has now caused another chaotic issue to be going on in, in Minnesota, but it's not the same. And yes, be angry about what happened to Dante. Nobody should be pulled over. I mean, I've heard a couple of stories. The first one I heard, which was for having air freshener little thing hanging from your uh, front um, mirror. And in Canada, I mean, I don't know. Is there a law that says we can't do that? I, I don't know. I, I'm, I've never heard anybody here being pulled over for something like that. And <sighs> and then the military officer. Things have got to change. Now, I'm not saying that things like what happened to Mr. Floyd don't happen to other people who have been in custody because that would be completely wrong. But these cases always seem to tear apart the victim. They want to tear apart the victim's life as if the people who were there the day that he died were also there and knew all about his troubled past. They did the same thing to Trayvon Martin. The people on George Zimmerman's side said he was within his rights. <clears throat> I mean, the poor guy was just minding his own business, you know, parking on a on a quiet street with the lights off in the place, area where he lived. And along came this kid, you know, this kid that looked up to no good. And he had a iced tea in his hand and some Skittles, you know, it was just coming back. It was raining. So he had his hood up. My God, that kid. But the whole thing. Like, people don't understand, maybe, that this is going on all the time. And even though they had video from the surveillance cameras at the place where Trayvon Martin's murder happened, they didn't have them set up so that you could actually, well, you saw the moment that it happened. <laughs> so, there was, in fact, wiggle room for George Zimmerman. And I won't call him Mr. because he's a pig. He's not a man. He's a child killer. That's my belief in that. But unfortunately in that one, the prosecution was not, they didn't have a well enough prepared case. It was, I don't know. And the jury, there were some jurors that had already made up their mind prior to when this happened, uh, when the trial happened. And then within less than 24 hours at the end of this trial, one of the jurors was offered a book deal, which was later reneged upon by the company after it was bombarded with people saying, what? So her claim to fame and the reason why you're going to sell her cookbook is because she served as a juror who acquitted a child murderer. Is that right? <laughs> you know? But in my opinion, and that's what it is, just like the jurors are being shown these documents and whatnot and having things explained from both sides and the judge listening to the judge. It's very interesting to hear what they have to say and the way that they're each presenting their side and their point of view. And it goes to show you how two people can see the exact same car accident and both people will remember it differently. That's just the way the human mind is. But I just wanted to pop on and give my view about, um, you know, what's happened, what's going on. Uh, closing arguments are supposed to begin on Monday. 
I believe Monday, uh, the judge wanted to give the jury the weekend off so that they could make plans, but told them that when they come to court on Monday, that they should be bringing a bag with them. So in other words, clothing and things that they'd need to be sequestered in a hotel. So I'll be watching the next bit of the trial. Uh, you can watch it live on PBS, which is where I've been watching it, uh, Public Broadcasting Service. And this is um, <clears throat> no commercials. It's completely live. And uh, all the other streams, NBC and all that, are also using the exact same stream. So I'm sure that this is allotted. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I'd be interested in hearing about that. Um, I'm going to go right now, but uh, I would love to know what your view is. Uh, evidence, do you think... Um, what do you think? Is Derek Chauvin innocent or guilty? Uh, do you think that he'll be acquitted? Do you think that he'll go to jail for murder two, murder three, or uh, manslaughter? Who knows? Thank you for watching all 72 of you. I hope you have a superb day. Take care. Bye-bye.